thought this was great. The first rule of 2003 is not to be dwell on what went wrong in 2002, 22. God has a plan, and he has it under control. God is in control, isn't he? Stand with me this morning. Larry uh, and Lana are both sick. Uh, he's, uh, I think he's got about two or three bugs around, wound up in one, and this morning I talked to him, and she was coughing her head off. So pray for Larry and Lana, and uh, we're, uh, we pray, pray for them, for their their health. <clears throat> Psalms 33, in verse 6, By the word of the Lord were all the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea together in a heap. He lay up in the depth of the, of the storehouse. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. God has all power, folks. Amen. We're going to be talking about the suddenness of God this morning. Fathers, we come to you this morning. We're thankful, Lord, for your love and your mercy. We're thankful for each and every one that's here. Lord, we pray that you would be with those who would like to be, who are sick and afflicted, Lord. We pray that you'd just draw near unto them. There's so many. And Lord, we pray as we begin this new year, that Lord, that we would put everything behind us, look forward to the new year to come, put our trust and our faith in God, and look forward to better things to come. Bless the service today, the singing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, if you want to use the hymnal, we're in page 380. Revive us again. We praise thee. Robert, would you open our service this morning? Amen. Be seated. Well, we don't have a bulletin today because Larry was 
not able to get down here and and uh, get it together, but uh, we uh, not a whole lot in the bulletin that other than today uh, have the evening service uh, this evening, uh, men and women's prayer at uh, 5:45. Brother Devin Lee will be speaking uh, tonight. Uh, I told Larry I'd go ahead, but he said, "Well, he said you better." This is my first go around in three months, so uh, still a little a little wobbly. So, uh, Brother Devin Lee will be with us to, tonight to, to speak. Remember our fellowship tonight, uh, first Sunday, uh, good good first Sunday fellowship on uh, New Year's Day. So, uh, we'll have uh, lots of good stuff to eat, sandwiches and and uh, and, and desserts. Uh, no brown swire tonight, but we'll we'll. Uh, uh, if if you were concerned about that, but uh, anyway, we'll uh, we'll have our evening evening fellowship, Wednesday night service, uh, seven o'clock. Uh, that's still up in the air, so uh, I don't know whether Larry will be feeling like it. He was really upset because the day was uh, uh, a vision Sunday, and and uh, I said, well, I'll just put it off for for a week, so. But anyway, Wednesday night, you may have me again. You may have Larry. We just don't know. It's just, this is a fluid situation right now. But uh, I will say, if uh, uh, good to see everyone out this morning that, that's here. Uh, there are some that are, that are sick, and we pray for, pray for them. And uh, I, I'll echo Larry's sentiments. If you feel good, hey, no better place to be than the church uh, house if you're sick. There's no better place for you to be as at home. So uh, let's don't spread the wealth. So uh, anyway, Brother James, get us started. All right. We're going to sing to God be the glory. Page 19 if you want to stand. Though. Oh, yep. Birthdays. <laughs> Almost forgot you, Randy. I know Randy's got one. How old, Randy? 70, the big 70. Uh, <laughs> she tell you to hush? <laughs> you don't have to tell us how old unless you want to, Roberta. Uh, Bob Crocker's got one. How many, Bob? 82. Any other birthdays in here this past week or coming up in the next few days? Okay, how about anniversaries? All right, let's sing happy birthday for these three. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, may the Lord bless and keep you, happy birthday to you. And it is January now, so I know Herb's got one coming real soon.
you know, we never know what a new year is going to hold, do we? And, um, but the one constant that we have our, in our life is we can always pray. As long as we have a mind and a heart that wants to, we can pray to the Lord. And it's really my favorite time of the day. So I'm going to sing that old hymn this morning, Sweet Hour of Prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from this world of care and bids me at my Father's throne makes all my wants and wishes known in seasons of distress and grief my soul has often found relief and oft escaped the tempter snare by thy return, sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, thy wings shall my petitions bear to him whose truth and faithfulness Engage the waiting soul to bless. And since he bids me seek his face, believe his word and trust his grace. I'll cast on him my every care and wait for thee, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer. May I thy consolation share Till from Mount Pisgah's lofty height I view my home and take my flight this robe of flesh I'll drop and rise to seize the everlasting prize and shout while passing through the air farewell Farewell, sweet hour of prayer. God bless this two thousand twenty three. If I had only known the last time would be the last time, 
I would have put off all the things I had to do. I would have stayed a little longer, held on a little tighter. Oh, what I'd give for one more day with you. There's a wound here in my heart where something's missing. And I know that you will only heal in time. But I know you're in a place where all your wounds have been erased. And knowing yours are healed is healing mine. The only scars in heaven won't belong to me and you. There'll be no such thing as broken All the old will be made new And the thought that makes me smile now Even as the tears fall down Is that the only scars in heaven Are on the hands that hold you now I know the world you walk was anything but easy You picked up your share of scars along the way Oh, but now you're standing in the sun You fought your fight and your race is run The pain is all a million miles away the only scars in heaven that won't belong to me and you. There'll be no such thing as broken. All the old will be made new. And the thought that makes me smile now, even as the tears fall down. Is that the only scars in heaven are on the hands that hold you now? Hallelujah! 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 On the hands that hold you now. Not a day goes by that I don't see you. You live on in all the better parts of me. Until I'm standing with you in the sun, I'll fight this fight and this race I'll run until I finally see what you can see. Oh, the only scars in heaven they won't belong to me and you There'll be no such thing as broken All the old will be made new And the thought that makes me smile now Even as the tears fall down That the only scars in heaven are on the hands that hold you now. Well, I got the chair back here just in case, so, and I do want to thank the the church for for praying with for me I had kind of a tough go with this this knee and my doctor says well that's just one of them uh, he said when you get the other one done you may not have a bit of trouble with it but we've had trouble with this one and uh, I sure wished I'd have been like my wife in two months been out chasing the kids in the yard so uh, at three months I'm lucky to even get out in the yard so but uh, anyway it's throbbing a little bit this morning but you know what we want to do the Lord's will, and uh, I uh, 
I've been I've been down and out of the pulpit long enough. I'm ready to get ready to get back and uh, uh, on this. Uh, you know, if you're gonna have a if you're gonna have a, a New Year's resolution, I think it's all to if you want to get one and keep it, be in the Lord's house every time the doors are open. And that's what we what we need to do. And I saw a guy this morning, I was watching the news, and his new New Year's resolution, they were, were getting emails from people, and his was, as he said, COVID's over, get back to the Lord's house. And that's what we need to, what we need to, right. to, to do. Uh, uh, you know, that... COVID has been out there for a long time. It's COVID-19. Hey, we've had this COVID. It's a flu virus, and it's been here for years. And, uh, yeah, it got a little rough this go around, but I think it probably had some help. But uh, we, won't get into, we won't get into that. But uh, just try to be conscious of, of your health and others' health and, and – uh, Look forward to a, a, a great year of 2033 and one hope. And that's why we might see the Lord's return this year. That's what I'm looking for. One more year out of the way. He didn't come last year, but I'm looking for him this year. I want to speak to you this morning on the suddenness of God. Uh, you know, uh, in, in Psalms... 33, our, our scripture we opened up with, it says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathereth the waters of the sea together as a heap. He lieth up the deep in the storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Boy, we have a lack of that today, don't we? We need to fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Brother Herb, would you pray for the preaching of the word this morning?
Amen. Now, I know there might be a couple of you sitting here thinking my title of the message may be, I don't know whether off a little bit or, or, or what. You know, I understand that sometimes we wonder where God's at. And sometimes we pray and we wonder why God don't answer. I think God pretty well answers prayer. But one thing I want you to remember is there's three different things when you pray. Sometimes God says yes and he fixes. Sometimes God says no. And sometimes, for reasons known only to him, does he let whatever we're going through be a learning lesson. Sometimes he lets situations in our life, he, sometimes he lets that be an educational point for us, to help us to grow, to give us strength to strengthen our faith but does God ever turn a deaf ear to our, 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 our prayers I don't think he does we just have to realize that we don't have the mind of God now saying that I, I, I think that uh, whenever he does act I think he does it sudden. He's done it since the since the, the the beginning. He says, "For he spake, and it was done." Now, I am not a theologian, and I am not even a a well educated man. I didn't I didn't graduate summa cum laude. I graduated laude how come? You know, they was. When I walked across and got my diploma, there was a couple of them standing there scratching their head. But I do love the Lord, and I love his word, and I spent my life studying it. And I try my best. But I also think that we need to take his word by faith. I just I get tickled. I watch TV at some of these liberal theologians and some of the uh, poppycock that they come up with and, and trying to figure out answers for this and that. And, and uh, one of my favorites is the ancient uh, aliens. Man, I'll tell you what, they got some stuff on there. that And, and I sit in there and I, I watch them and they, they, they give their theories of this and that. And it's like, it's in the Bible. All you got to do is pick up God's word. It's there. The answer to all of our issues are in God's word. Why did he give it to us? For that very reason. I got to tickle at them the other day. They were talking about finding bones of giants. Well, it's in the Bible. Fallen angels came down and took earthly women as wives and created a race of, angel, of, 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 of giants. Where do you think Goliath and his brothers came from? You know, so it's all in God's word. Now, I'm not going to stand and, uh, when it comes to the, the, the creation and, and, and argue with you the, 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 the length of days and, and uh, the gap theory. Uh, I have studied the gap theory. Of, uh, and there is a passage of scripture that says uh, uh, time with the Lord is, is a day is as a thousand years. And, and they use that a lot. And I'm not going to argue too much about that. I've studied it. And I see both sides of the, I see both sides of the uh, equation on, on, on that. And I have to take the, 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 li the Bible literally. I think it is literal. I think it means exactly what it says. And I think God means exactly what he says. And I believe, I, I, I take that, I, I said, I, I'm not going to, I can understand the 6,000 years, you know, of, of the creation. But the God, the, the word of God tells me God created it in six days. 
Six days was the creation. On the seventh day, he rested. He made that day holy for us to serve him. I also believe it was supernatural. And I also believe it was sudden. Just take a quick look. God's creation was sudden. If you, if you look at it in a six-day creation, it was very sudden. On day one, he created the earth void without form. He created it from nothing. Now the scientists are still trying to figure out where he made something out of nothing. He's God. He was able to do it. He spoke it into existence. They've never figured it out. Except some of the science, scientists have turned to the Bible and begin to understand what intelligent design is. Their intelligent design is their buzzword for God did it. God did it. He spoke. One minute there was nothing. The next minute there was light. Day two, he could break the heavens around us. Day three, dry land. The sea, the grass, the herbs, the trees. Now these weren't, God didn't run around planting seeds. He created everything in its mature state. Bearing seeds to carry on his creation. Fourth day, the stars, the planets, the moon. He brought the sun into place, the seasons. Day five, the fish, the fowls of the air. Day six, the animals and man and woman. You know, it was all sudden. He spake it into existence. Our little feeble minds can't even begin to comprehend and understand God and his power. You know what? When Jesus got here, we just celebrated his birth. But When he got here and began his ministry at 30 years old, he began to perform miracles. His miracles were sudden. You know, his uh, uh, first miracle was at the wedding at Canaan when he turned the water into wine. Now, you can make all kinds of things that you want to, that they was using pots that had wine in them before, but hey, water is water. There's wine is wine. They're two totally separate things. And when God turned the water into wine, I believe he turned the water into wine. Amen. There's absolutely his miracles. He performed throughout his ministry were supernatural and they were sudden. Why? As a witness as to who he was. The prophets of old said there's going to be a man come on the scene who is going to be sent by God. And how are you going to tell? By the things he does and the things he says. In Matthew 28, or 8, we see the disciples out in a boat. The storm came up. Man, they were afraid for their lives. They went and woke him up. He's in the back of the boat asleep. Don't you care that we perish? What did he do? He spoke. Suddenly the storm was calmed. They said, what manner of man can do this? He, he was man. But he was also all God. And I don't believe that the storm slowed down slow. I believe it stopped. He suddenly stopped and calmed it. See the man laying at the pool at Bethesda in John chapter 5. 
38 years he lay there. They'd bring him to the pool of Bethesda, and, but he had no one to help him in the water. The, that, the angels would come down and disturb the water, and the first one to get in would be, would be healed. Well, as Jesus walked by, he knew the man, knew his history. And what did he say? Take up thy bed and walk. He didn't have to learn how to walk. He didn't have to go to therapy. <laughs> he was made whole immediately. It was sudden. The woman with the issue of blood in Luke spent all of her money trying to go to doctors to find out what was wrong with her. Never to be healed until Jesus walked by. She simply reached out and touched the hem of his garment. What healed her? Her faith. Her faith. Sometimes we wonder why we don't get healed. Maybe it's our faith. We have that feel, that faith, that Jesus can heal us. That healing can come sudden and supernatural. Does God heal? Absolutely. He absolutely heals. The lack of healing, I believe, is our faith. We're not willing to accept it. The leper asked the Lord to heal him. What did he do? He reached out and took his hand immediately. Scripture says immediately he was healed. He healed the lame where they just stood up and walked. He healed the blind where scales fell from their eyes and they were healed. His touch, it was immediate, it was sudden. Does God still do that today? I believe he can, and I believe he does. You know, God's salvation is sudden. When God saves us, it's a sudden deal. It's not a slow process. We don't have to get better and better every day. There's a lot of people try to do that, try to get better as time goes on, but they don't do, need that. When the convicting power of the Holy Spirit becomes upon your life and you kneel and you say, God, I'm a sinner. I need you in my life. I need you to come into my life. Forgive me of these sins. You know what happens? It's sudden. It's immediate. And you're filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost comes into your life. It ain't something that's got to be earned. It ain't nothing that can be taught. The Holy Spirit comes into your life. You are changed instantly, immediately, suddenly. And if you get up and there's no change in your life, then you wasn't serious to start with. God has the power to do that. When salvation comes, it's sudden. Our sins are forgiven. Your heart's made new. Old things are gone away. You have a, a new desire. You think different. You talk different. You act different. If there's no change, then you didn't get it. There's a lot of people out there today trying to get people walking up to them on the streets. And, and, I, and I believe, I believe in, in, in witness. And I think we ought to witness to strangers. But sometimes I see people praying a prayer and in turn walk around and walk off and there's absolutely no difference. The Holy Spirit has to be in it. 
When God changes it, it's sudden. He can dry out the drunkard, straighten out the drug addict, cast out demons. He even saved a sinner like me. I kind of feel like old Paul sometimes, the chiefest of sinners. Thank God he convicted me and came into my life. And it took a lot of work on me. He saved me suddenly. But he had work. He had work on me for a while. You know, some people get the idea that preacher's kids are just, they got it. I ain't got news for you. They ain't got it. They don't give it until Jesus gives it to them. Listen, folks, his return is going to be sudden. First Corinthians chapter 15, my favorite passages of Scripture. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we'll be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. How fast is the twinkling of an eye? Pretty quick. They say it's, uh, uh, the twinkle of an eye is faster than batting your eyelids. Well, batting your eyelids is pretty quick. Can you just imagine one of these days, Jesus is going to step out on the portals of glory and say, Son, go get your bride. And by the time you bat your eyes, we're going to be from here to there. From here to there. And I think that in also includes, I think that also includes the resurrection of the dead in Christ. It's going to be that quick, folks. It's going to be sudden. It's going to be immediate. That's our blessed hope. You know, I told you when we started the service, forget about 2022. It's gone. Man, there was some bad stuff happened. Things I didn't like at all. And I'm sure there's be some things that's going to happen in 2023 that I don't like either. But we just have to let God have it. We can't change it anyway. You know, our country is in a sad situation. But what I'm looking for is that sudden coming of our Lord. No more pain or suffering. Got a new body. Reunited with our loved ones. Moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas. And brothers and sisters. And husbands and wives and children. But the best of all. We're going to get to see Jesus. The one that died for us. I've heard people say, oh, I want to walk up and give him a big old hug. I want to kiss his feet. Man, I tell you what, it's going to be a great, great time. The cathedrals, uh, they sang a song. I, I, I hate it that the cathedrals are gone. They're all gone now. But, man, they sang a song that's called What a Meeting. It says, what a happy day it will be. What glorious jubilee. All heaven will be there. What a meeting in the air. Precious lives are so sad to see those who live in misery. But in heaven, no more grief nor pain. Crippled lives are whole again. Man, I tell you what, it's going to be great. Sad part is, going to be a, a lot of people that are not going to be there. There's going to be a great marriage supper for the church. But there's not going to be for the lost. There's only going to be anguish and punishment. Unbelief 
rejection of Jesus, not willing to give up the world, more interested in prosperity than salvation, believing a lie, false teachers, never hearing about the blood of Jesus, never hearing about a place called hell. Listen, folks. We need a revival in our nation. We need a revival in our church, in our world. There are great evangelistic moves going on in different countries in the world. But you're not going to hear it from our, our media. How do we do it? We get on our knees and we start praying. We start asking God to send a, a supernatural message to us. That our hearts be stirred. First, you've got to realize that who Jesus is, who God is. And the only way we're going to make it is through his blessed power. Through his salvation, he came and died on a cross for our sins. But this country's in trouble. I think sometimes we need a little judgment. I think sometimes we need a little persecution. You know what happened after 9-11? Everybody ran to the church house. How soon we forget. How soon we forget. You know, we got a lot of, a lot of dead timber in the church. <laughs> And what we need to do is keep that dead timber from falling on the young sprouts. And that's in our that's our responsibility, folks, as a church. To raise up and to teach new children of God. Teach our children. They've taken it out of the school. And put everything else in it except God. You know, I, even, even, a, even a, a dead tree, somebody who's been saved, maybe fell back, kind of dying a little bit. But that little sprig is there. I got a tree out in my yard. It's a redbud tree, and I couldn't tell you how many times I've cut that stupid thing down mowing. But you know what? If you wait a, a year or a few months, what do you see? You see a little sprig start to rise up out of that stump. It gets revived. If you let it go it'll, and don't mow it down again, it'll go into a tree. We need revival, folks. We need our hearts stirred, not only as an individual, but a church and a nation. We need to pray for this country. There's a time coming that ain't going to be long whenever Jesus comes. And for those who are not ready, it's going to be too late then. My prayer is that we never quit preaching. Jesus is coming. The only way through salvation is through Jesus Christ. Time's coming. Time's growing short. If you've never been saved, hey, there's no better day than to start the year off right. If you're a guilty distance from him, Today's the day to get back closer to the Lord. It's a new year. It may be our last one. As we stand and morning and have an invitation. If you have a need, this altar is open today. Give your heart and life to Jesus.
you're a guilty distance from him. Time to grow close. Time to get things right. We have no guarantee of any time past right now. Brother James. Today's the day of salvation. No guarantee of tomorrow. We don't know when it's going to happen, but it's going to happen, and it's going to happen sudden. No time to repent. and hearts clear can you with a peaceful heart say even so come quickly Lord Jesus if you have to cringe a little bit if you say it you can know for sure let's uh, be seated Mr. Roseanne has a closing song for us